Um, just uh, uh, as after watching us on film against Allen, I'm real proud of the guys. They're, they're doing the hard things well. Defending, rebounding, talking, those are the difficult things. And then the simple things, we're not doing them as well. Uh, um, you know, the simple pass from the point to the wing. Uh, the young guys struggle with that one right now. Um, uh, passing the ball to the guy that's not being covered rather than passing it to the guy that is being covered. That's that that was a problem that game. And we're making those same mistakes in practice, that decision right there. Um, wide open threes from guys that make shots, not even coming close. Uh, point blank layups just missed. That was I'm talking about Allen. Um, those are the mistakes that we were making. Those are those are those are the simple plays. Those are the ones that uh, uh, they're a lot easier to fix than the other side, which what we're doing well, which is defending, rebounding, talking. Um, so, um, so I'm 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 happy with what I saw. Now, as we get ready for our first game, we're playing a team that has two dynamic wing scores. Uh, um, um, uh, number number ten and number four. Oh God, I can't. Taylor and I can't remember the other young man's name, but they're both dynamic. They both uh, uh, real good jump shooters. Uh, one's better with the ball off the dribble. Uh, Short, I think's his name. Uh, then Taylor. Taylor can also post you up. Uh, but you know, and you're talking about a team that's got a winning culture. Uh, so uh, that's the the hardest thing to overcome. Sometimes is not someone's talent. Uh, is the, the, their fabric, and they're, they're a program that's used to winning, and, uh, and having to overcome that um, uh, is the difficult thing, especially early in the year. Frank, you mentioned after the Allen game, a lot of the freshmen had some nervous moments. You know, mm -hmm. guys just couldn't, couldn't believe where they were. How do you think that will be affected going into now a real game? And do you think it completely disappears or more of the same? No, I, I mean, you're nervous as a player, as a coach. You're nervous before every game. You, you, it's, you never go into a game and say, ah, you're, you're nervous because you put in time, you work, and, 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 uh, and it's time to perform. Uh, the thing experience allows you to do is that when you do your job before the game uh, in preparation, whether it's repetitions on the court, whether it's film study, whether it's mental – uh, when you when you do your job before the game starts, that preparation allows you to overcome your nerves, and that's uh, the experience factor. And that's something that uh, uh, the young guys, as the year goes on, hopefully they learn uh, how to manage that one. I don't think nerves ever go away. And, and anyone that says that they're not nervous before games, I I, I don't know how truthful that is. Uh, uh, then again, I'm not everybody. I can only speak for myself. Uh, um, but uh, but I, I, I think what happens is uh, the way you control your nerves is through confidence. And you, you gain confidence through experience. You gain confidence through your work ethic. Um, and uh, that's what helps you manage nerves. I know you're only thinking about the Norfolk State game, but, you know, with two games back-to-back, -back, was that part of the challenge or, I mean, with the Paradise Jam, or was it by design on your end to have those back-to-back -to, -back to get your guys into season mode? Yeah, I wanted to play Friday and Monday. Uh, but obviously, you know, the women deserve to have Friday night to themselves. They, they, they've earned that right. And uh, so uh, we decided to move the game to Saturday. Uh, then I much rather have played Saturday at 11 or 12 o'clock morning, early afternoon. But because of television, now we got to play Saturday night. It is what it is. Um, uh, it'll be a great opportunity for for us to understand how to how to go from that quick turn to then turn around and have another quick turn the following weekend. I, I'm more concerned with six games in 12 days. I think that's what the number is. 
Uh, I'm more concerned with that and managing our, our, our guys, their bodies, their minds, um, uh, not getting too confident because we win a couple or not getting too down because we don't figure one of these out. Uh, um, I'm more concerned with that than I am that, that initial turn. Just going back to Lamonis, can you talk about, I know when he first got here, you talked about him not being able to run up and down the floor and mm -hmm. kind of joked at that time, and it seemed like he's in pretty good shape going into his his senior year. Can you just talk about his development over the last four years? Yeah, I, I was just watching him on film upstairs from last year, and we won the game, and I kind of turned the film off aggravated um, uh, just because he doesn't understand – just how good he really can be. I think he's starting to figure it out. I, it goes back to the confidence thing being built through your work ethic. I think his work ethic uh, has grown every year. I think he has kind of worked his way into physically. Uh, when you look at him, it's a different human being than what he was the day he stepped foot on campus. Uh, I think he, as time goes forward, will continue to feel more comfortable with his conditioning, with his strength, with his ability to take on contact. When you're out of shape, you don't like contact. It, it just contact's not comfortable. Uh, when you're not strong, contact's not comfortable. Well, he's worked real hard to do those things that you're talking about uh, to where now he's in a better place. Like he dunks on balls, and you can say, well, they weren't very tall. Height has nothing to do with it. He couldn't dunk those balls two years ago uh, in the Allen game. He couldn't dunk them by himself in layup lines, let alone in any kind of game situation where you got to catch and jump and turn and dunk. And uh, so he's come a long ways. And and I've been hard on Limonis. I really have. He, you can ask him; he'll tell you. We've been hard on him, and especially me. Uh, and he's he's never run away from it. On the contrary, he's worked more and more and more uh, to to become better. And uh, I, my challenge with him has always been. Even the people that coach him in his country, their challenge when he was young is, is, is uh, he doesn't, I don't know if he really understands how good he could be at this game uh, if he just mentally gets in the right place. Speaking of that, kind of the same thing, Eric Cobb seemed to show a lot of athleticism to show that he had some of that to go along with that big body. Have you been pleased with his progression as the season started? Yeah, you know, Brian, Eric's interesting. He, uh, he's dropped close to 25 pounds. Uh, he's lowered his body fat uh, by like 6.5%. Uh, and, 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 you know, and uh, he's, his lean muscle has gone up uh, by 9 pounds, I want to say. Um, he's, he's, and he's only been here. He wasn't here for summer. He's only been here since the beginning of the school year back in August sometime. Um, he, he's, he's fun. He's fun to be around. Um, he's got pride. <clears throat> we knew he had real good footwork. Didn't realize his footwork is as good as it is. Knew he had good hands. Didn't realize that his hands were as good as they are. And I think what he's starting to realize as a player is because of the, the change in body formation and the weight change – he can run and keep up with the game, and he actually has some lift off the ground for a kid that, that size. Um, he missed some chippies in that – in the, the whatever exhibition game. Uh, those are just shots that he will make. Uh, those are you – know, you, the shots he got were college shot attempts. They were not bad high school game shot attempts. They were based on – where he was at on the floor, his footwork, his ability to catch, the angle he created, uh, those are the same shots he's going to get in games. Now he's going to have to learn how to do the same work against a six foot ten guy, uh, but then that shot he's going to get it you know, because he's so he he understands angles, understands his body, understands how to use it, um, and uh, his footwork is real good and his hands are real good. He he. he yeah, I, him and PJ are probably our best two passers. He can really, really pass the basketball. It's it's uh, 
Um, he, he's, he's unique. There's not too many guys that play like him anymore. And I'm excited to have him. Frank, you've been doing this for a while, and, and you know you, you take a high school kid who might play 25 games in a season twice a week. How do you prepare them for playing five games in 10 days and to just to have that quick turnaround? Um, that's – the easy part is for them to go out and just play because that's kind of the culture that we've created now at the grassroots level where they just play, you know, let's, let's – Got another game, lost by 30. Oh, got another game. Uh, got eliminated on Saturday. It's okay, next Thursday is another tournament. We've got nine more games to play there. It's kind of the, the, the culture that we've created. Uh, so they, their willingness to go play, they're kind of, that's kind of what they've been exposed to. The challenge is to get them to understand why every possession of every game is so important on a quick turn, let alone when they only got two games in a week not six and 12, uh, getting them to understand how to separate. Well, I just had 10 points, eight rebounds, helped us beat a real good team. I've arrived and show up the next day and think that it's easy and not understanding how difficult every single night is. And um, I, I think that's where the challenge is with the young guys, um, uh, getting them to, to comprehend that. Um, uh, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out who can manage it and who can't. I'd, I'd love to petition the NCAA to allow us to move our games when I'm not happy. Unfortunately, they kind of don't let me do that one. They kind of make us play, you know, whatever day we, we agreed on paper to play those games. Frank, how would you assess how your team has shot the basketball from the perimeter in the preseason? Yeah, I, I think we, we've shot it pretty good. Um, uh, here towards the end of, of preseason, uh, like leading into the – I shouldn't say leading – that last week, I thought we got a little inconsistent. Um, P.J. didn't shoot it well, and then he rolled his ankle. Uh, Stroman, who'd worked so hard, had, unfortunately, we're all creatures of habits, and he worked so hard in the spring and summer – uh, to become a better perimeter shooter. He's kind of fallen, and he's changed his mechanics. Now that we're four weeks in, he's kind of fallen back into his old mechanics, and he's not having a lot of success, so he, now he's pressing a little bit. we got to get him back to a, to a good place where, where, where he thinks it's the middle of June sometime, and he's just working on his shot in the gym. Dwayne's going to make shots. I'm, you know, he, he's had a bad week shooting the basketball, but... You know, you're talking about a two-year guy, a guy who made 60-some-odd threes last year. I'm not worried about him. Uh, Sindarius has been shooting it a lot better. Uh, you know, it was funny about – I joked to him about this after the Allen game. I said, hey, man, I, I said, uh, shooting it a lot better. The problem is that the ones you miss now are air balls, so we can't rebound those air balls. It, can you have them hit the rim now? And uh, But, uh, we're, I, you know, P.J.'s not – P.J.'s not going to show out here and make 10 threes in a game, but P.J.'s a much better shooter than what he did the other day. Uh, our, our Limonis can shoot it. Mendogas can shoot Mendogas not being in the lineup hurt us because he, he understands what we do, and he's another guy that can make some shots for us. Carrera can really shoot the ball. Uh, I, I'm not – I mean, like I've said before, are, are we going to figure out who the best shooting team in the country is and have a shooting contest with them? They're probably not going to win that one. Uh, but – to win games, I think we're fine with our perimeter shooting. Any more Frank, you mentioned Minda. How is the team's health, and will he be okay? Is there anybody else been dinged up? Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. We were off yesterday, uh, so we gave him Monday off. Uh, that way, made no sense to practice on Monday to take a day off yesterday. So we just said, just go ahead and get the trifecta out of the way. And he did, and uh, uh, he'll be out there today, 100% ready to go. He, he could have practiced Monday. We said, why? Make, I mean, senior, it, it makes no sense to, to, you know, get those young guys the extra reps they needed. Um, and uh, uh, PJ's good. 
Uh, Michael had a sore throat yesterday, but we were off. So I have not gotten a follow-up report, so I'm assuming that means he's okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm not – that's not the sarcastic, Frank. It's truth. He, he wasn't feeling well yesterday morning, uh, but I haven't had a follow-up note, so uh, I'm assuming he's okay. Um, uh, so we're, we're healthy. We're – Hope we stay there. I'm tired. I, I joked with our trainer before the exhibition game. I said, "Can I understand? I've been here four years and I know how it works. Can we change the policy of South Carolina?" He says, "What's that?" I said, "For me to have every single game we play a guy that can't play on that day. Can we like change that policy?" I'm not I'm not used to that one. You said Sin shot the ball well on Sunday, and he didn't take that many shots, but he was really efficient, and it looked like he really like took command of the game. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from him as far as just on Saturday and how he can come in a game? He's been – that's who he's been the whole preseason. He's – you know, Sanders a real, real good player. I, I don't think he's ever gotten the credit. Uh, someone in this room just wrote a great piece about him here recently. Uh, I'd give him credit, but then I'd have to acknowledge his name too, and I don't know if I want to do that. But now Will, Will just wrote a piece on him, which is phenomenal. And – and I don't think he's ever been given the credit that he deserves, you know, because he, he could have picked the big boys and he chose to stay here and help us build. And he's dealt with, he's dealt with losing. He's dealt with his body getting beat up because of all the stuff that he had to deal with as a player. And uh, he's healthy right now. And he's mentally, he's in a real good place. And, you know, my job as a coach is to help him, help him stay there. Uh, manage his body so his body doesn't break down on him. He's stronger, so I think his body's more prepared. But he's he's been he's been real good in preseason. And and uh, like I said a couple weeks ago, I don't I'm not into rooting for a guy. I hope that guy has a real good year. Now I want all of them to have a real good year. But I'm really rooting for him to succeed because uh, he deserves it. Because he's a real good player that that uh, uh, that I don't think he's ever gotten the credit he deserves. Uh, within our own state uh, for, for the decision he made and for the kind of player that he is. Notice you put out a tweet uh, this morning or this afternoon related to uh, National Signing Day, the period beginning today. What's this day like for you, uh, especially when you have somebody that goes down to the wire with a decision, but what's the day like for you, the ups and downs of, of waiting for the LOIs to come in? Yeah, it's uh, – you know, 8.30 this morning, you know, and obviously later on, once the period's over, I'll make one statement on, on the whole thing. But, you know, we, C.D. Keita is in. And, and knowing that, that we can, you know, our staff continues to go out and recruit six foot ten guys of his caliber, that, that gets you excited, you know. And, you know, Phil, I, I don't want to speak for you. I can speak for me. But, you know, recruiting's a lot like dating. You know, guys like you and I probably got thrown out the door a lot more than we got invited in. And uh, just an assumption on my part, Phil. I'm not. <laughs> it's it, it is what it is. You you. The beauty of recruiting is the relationships that you build and the people you get to know. Uh, you know, there are a lot of times you get guys, and two months after you got them, you're like, I wish you would have gone somewhere else. And other times you don't get guys and you develop an unbelievable amount of respect for them. And uh, uh, that's, that's the beauty in recruiting. I don't think there's, you know, there are guys that you fall in love with in recruiting and, and they're not who they're panned out to be when you've got to be around them every single day. And there's other guys that when you start recruiting, you kind of view them and you're like, hmm. But if you give yourself a chance, you might realize that, this is one of the special guys in your program three years later. Um, so uh, it's – I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited about the, the people that we're recruiting, the, the right people, uh, the ones that we've identified to – here's the popular thing in today's day and age in recruiting, Phil. So are you offering? Here's my, here's my question. Are you committing? I don't understand what the popularity of trying to figure out who offered. When colleges can't speak, how do you know if the offers are valid or not? But it's become a popularity thing. 
we're not big into all that. You know, I, we, we're going to identify who we think fits who we are, and we're going to build a relationship. And building that relationship will get us to the place where now it's a genuine recruitment and not a popularity thing. And uh, uh, I'm extremely happy with our staff. The, the guys that they've put on the table for us, uh, the, the guys like CD that continue to say we're in, uh, allows us to, to be excited about our program. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately, you don't get them all. If not, recruiting would be too easy and wouldn't be any fun. Uh, but uh, but you, you, you get to meet a lot of neat people in the recruitment. And you get to meet a lot of people that you figure out when the recruitment's over, I never want to speak to that person again. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's fun.